الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله All praise is due to Allah We praise him and we seek the forgiveness from the evil of our deeds and the evil of ourselves Whoever Allah guides, none can misguide, and whomever Allah rightfully misguides, none can guide. And I bear witness that Allah alone is the only deity worthy of worship, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqallahu haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O you who believe, fear Allah as he deserves to be feared. And do not die except in a state of a Muslim. Amma ba'd. The days of Ramadan are over. The days of the mandatory fasts are over. The days of fasting seem to be over. The days of Qiyamul Layl, perhaps they seem to be over. The days of coming into the masjid day in and day out spending the entire night awake, sacrificing sleep, they seem to be over. And many of us, we, we question ourselves. We think that, subhanAllah, just two weeks ago today, I was calling off of work, I was skipping classes for preparation of the 27th night. SubhanAllah, two weeks today, just two weeks ago, it was the 27th night of Ramadan. You and I, we were getting ready to do i'tikaf in the masjid. You and I, we were getting ready to what? To just spend the entire night in ibadah, in worship. And now, two weeks later, we feel as if we've fallen astray. Or we feel that perhaps we are no longer what we were two weeks ago. And that is completely okay. Oftentimes on social media, oftentimes we have these people say, well, look at the masajid, they were full in Ramadan, but now they're empty. Well, look at so-and-so individual, they used to do X, Y, and Z in Ramadan, but now look at them. Wallahi, that's such a scary thing to say. Because is Ramadan not special? Is Ramadan not the time of the year? Is it not the month where we push ourselves? So perhaps instead of saying or having that pessimistic look, be a little bit more optimistic. 
Subhanallah, so many of us who are working folk, folks, so many of us who are students, we only have so many days off in the year. We only have so many days that we can miss school or be excused. And our ulama and our scholars and our teachers will tell you that you should take those days off for the 10 nights of Ramadan or perhaps for Ramadan. Why do I mention this? So when that same individual and you and I perhaps were not in the masjid on a random Tuesday for Salat al-Dhuhr because that's during the work hour, that's okay insha'Allah. Because you have to make a living. You have to go on about your day. But there's a caveat that when you can, when you can push yourself, push yourself. When you can go to the masjid on the days where you have off or on your way from work, you decide to go pray Salat al-Asr or before work, you get up and you pray Fajr. Push yourself a little bit harder. The question that we should be asking is, is not necessarily, oh, in Ramadan, I was a better Muslim. Of course you were a better Muslim in Ramadan. SubhanAllah, the external, for, uh, the, uh, the external um, um, uh, distractions were locked up. It was just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this, this vibe that everybody loves and everyone misses the, the second Ramadan is over. And this is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to witness many Ramadans. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, the Sahaba did not know what to do. And many of the Sahaba, they were going and today, what we, they, were, they were running back and forth. They, didn't, they were going nuts. They didn't know what to do. Even Umar, radiyallahu an, Umar al Faruq, that if there was a Prophet after Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if there was, it would have been who? Umar. Even him, in a story that many of us, uh, many of us heard, that he did not know what to do, and the words that he said were very strong. But subhanAllah, what did Abu Bakr say? He just re he, he, re he recited the verses of the Sahaba that you and I recite regularly, or at least we should. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a man, as a messenger, but Allah is everlasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just the Rabb of Ramadan, he is the Rabb of Shawwal, of Rajab, of Dhul Hijjah, of Muharram, you name it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord with no, 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 with no, no, no beginning nor end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves to be worshipped every single second of our life. And how beautiful is it that our religion allows us just to adjust our niyyah in almost every single thing we do so that we can get rewarded for it. You want to go to work, stop and ask yourself, why am I going to work? So that I can earn a living so I can feed my family. Why am I going to sleep? So that I can rest so that when I wake up, I can worship Allah in a state of strength or in a, st in a state that He should be worshipped. Why do I go to the gym? Because المؤمن القوي خير وأقرب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف. That the stronger believer is more beloved and close to Allah than the uh, than the weaker believer. وفي كل خير. Why am I eating to 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 sustain myself? Why am I spending time with my family, so on and so forth? Subhanallah, going out with your loved one, with a spouse, with a family member, there is reward in that. Simply going to perhaps a walk in the park. This is how beautiful our religion is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of every single month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no beginning nor end. And He deserves to be worshipped every second of our life. So the question that we should be asking ourselves, the question that we should be asking ourselves is, now what do I do? Alhamdulillah, I had a great Ramadan. Inshallah, we did and insha'Allah, Allah, we ask Allah to accept. We had a great Ramadan the last 10 nights. I pushed myself. I did atikaf. I finished my khatam. Perhaps I finished my khatam. Maybe I was reading a hadith. Maybe I was attending, I listened to more khawatir, more, more lectures, whatever the case may be. I never missed a salat al-fajr. And maybe I never missed a salat al-isha. Whatever the case may be. Now you ask ourselves, and may Allah accept. Wallahi, the only, yani, ahamshi, the only thing that matters is that Allah's acceptance. 
Subhanallah, they, were, they say that there was a great companion. I believe it was Ibn, uh, uh, Ibn Umar. Abdullah Ibn Umar. Where a man asked for the sake of time, a man asked for some, um, for some assistance. And the long story short, Abdullah, I'm sorry, Umar, the great companion, gives this man some money. And his son says, Taqabbal Allah. May Allah accept. And subhanAllah, when, you, when a, a Sahabi is saying this to another Sahabi, Taqabbal Allah, it's such an interesting phrase when you think about it. Right? Because Taqabbal Allah, subhanAllah, we say that, but there's no doubt that we hope that Allah accepts from everyone, but it's such an interesting phrase. Nonetheless, Umar radiallahu anhu says, if I knew that Allah accepted my deed in that moment, then I would, I would wish that my life ended there. My dear brothers and sisters, every single act of ibadah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance. Because wallahi it matters. It doesn't matter about the lights or the, the views on the social media posts or what people say about you. Or, no, no, none of that matters. What matters is the qubur. What matters is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting from you. So we ask ourselves, what do I do now? Where do I go from now? How do I live my life? Is there a phrase that I can say every single day? Is there a motto? Is there, is there something that whenever I'm looking from, wherever I'm looking, whatever I'm about to do, what can I say? What can I do to remind myself that I need to remember Allah? And it is the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives to Mu'ad and Mu'ad narrates this. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt. He says, fear Allah wherever you are. This, as the hadith continues, but the first, per, just the first, the, it's a short hadith, but the first portion, so many lessons can be derived from this. <laughs> fear Allah wherever you are. And taqwa comes from the word what? Waqaya, which is a shield. And the purpose of a shield is what? A shield protects us. So taqwa is a protection from anything and everything that will jeopardize your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa here is subjective, meaning that there are some communal aspects that yes, we, we hope to get taqwa from, but more so that the things that I may be more conscious of may not be the, the, the same things that you or someone else may be. But when we think of the word taqwa, or what does it mean to be a muttaqi? It means to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are. Literally wherever you are. And understand that when we are conscious of Allah, and we put Allah first, no matter where we are, Allah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a way out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not cheap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not cheap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not cheap. Allah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you things that you can only imagine. Things that you have never planned. SubhanAllah, there are people, there are people who, SubhanAllah, when you talk to them, that they live below the poverty line, but they seem to be doing well. Wallah al azim I have asked many people, SubhanAllah, you know, just trying to, just, just out of conversation. And I remember one brother telling me, Wallahi Isa, Whenever I put the numbers to paper, whenever I put the pen to paper and write down my numbers, my salary, my income, my rent, inflation, taxes, midday, what, you name it. He says that when I put pen to paper, wallahi, the numbers don't make sense. I should be in debt by 30% at least every month. But subhanAllah, I'm actually sit, I have a savings account, Allahumma lakal hamd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens doors that you have never imagined. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, is not cheap. Again, taqwa is subjective. So the question that you ask yourself is, Isa, Fulan, whoever the case may be, when you look at yourself in the mirror, when you're sitting alone in the car, when you are just you and yourself and no one's around, am I being conscious of Allah? Am I being, am I putting up a shield? Am I protecting myself? from anything and everything that's protecting, protecting me 
from, uh, from uh, uh, messing, with my, messing up my relationship with Allah? Is it the music? If so, then you need to stop. You need to figure out how to change that. Is it your friend? Asahabu sahib. Is it your friend? If so, you need to question yourself. Is it the environment you are in? If so, then ask yourself this question. Why would I put myself in an environment where the malaika, where the angels are not in? Wherever you are, my dear brothers and sisters, ask yourself, am I doing something here to be more conscious of Allah? And as mentioned, to gain taqwa, to gain consciousness, consciousness of Allah is subjective. It varies from every individual person, from, uh, from person to person. One way is to learn Allah, to learn about who Allah, uh, to learn about Allah. To know Allah, to learn Allah is to know Allah. And to learn about his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will increase in your love for Allah azza wa jal. So take that time to continue to learn that same Ramadan energy where you were attending the halaqat every single night. Choose one. Maybe to choose one or two that you know you are consistent. You watched a YouTube series that you really liked and you really benefited from. Perhaps that channel, perhaps that, 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 that producer, or whatever the case may be. Maybe they have other uh, channels and videos that you can benefit from. Just continue. Don't let it stop. And remember the phrase of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ittaqallaha haythu ma kunt. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين على حبيبنا المصطفى المرتضى المجتبى محمد بن عبد الله صلوات الله عليه وسلم for the sake of time, we will mention five action items that every single one of us, inshallah, can do. To remember this phrase of uh, To remember the phrase of being God consciousness. To remember how to consistently strive forward. There is a rule in, in, in fitness, in athletics, that if you can get 1% better every single day, and subhanAllah, this rule can be applied anywhere. But if you can get 1% better every single day, by this time next year, you just got 365% better than you were last year. We're not saying 10%. We're not saying 20%. We're not saying 30%. SubhanAllah, when we were learning about from our teachers, when we were learning about ways to increase in uh, post-Ramadan, one of our teachers, Hafizullah, he says the 10% rule. That whatever you are doing, 10%. SubhanAllah, for myself, I was like, man, that's a little tough. Being very honest, that's a little tough sometimes. And there's days where we have to push ourselves, no doubt. Then I said, SubhanAllah, what about the 1% rule? Where 1%, just a little bit different than I did yesterday. I got a little bit better today than I was yesterday. By the start of the next year, or by the start of the next Ramadan, I just got 365% days, or 365 better. Hope that makes sense. A little bit. Aisha, Umm al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anha, she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she says, Ya Rasulullah, which of the deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? She asks, which of the deeds are most beloved? Uh, 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 she says, a'mal ahabu ila Allah. So which of the deeds are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He sallallahu, alayhi, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a very famous hadith, Adbamuha wa inqal. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those that are little and that are consistent. And this is not which is what deed. No, no, the question was, what are the deeds that are most beloved in one narration? What are the, the deeds that are most beloved? Meaning that they're here, they can't go above that. They're the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says the deeds that are small but consistent, the 1%. Every single one of us here today can do something a little bit better. Number one, 
or we can continue where we left off in Ramadan. Maybe you want to finish a khatam. Maybe you wanted to go cover to cover. And subhanAllah, let's say for whatever the reason why you stopped at Surah Yusuf, the middle of the Mus'haf, or maybe a little, yani around the area. Or let's say you stopped in the middle of the Mus'haf, whatever it may be. Continue where you left off. Don't just put the Qur'an back on the shelf because, because the Qur'an is for yourself and it's not for the shelf. Continue where you left off. Number two, and you've heard it a million times just in the last few days, the six days of Shawwal. The six days of Shawwal. The reward of the six days of Shawwal is as, as if you, the one who fasts Ramadan and then follows it up with any six days of Shawwal. That's the beauty of it. Any six days of Shawwal, it's as if you fasted the entire year. This is not the days right after Eid. If so, many of us may have already failed. But no, the hadith says that any six days, stack up the sunnah. St Mondays and Thursdays, ayyam al bid the three white days, stack those up. Because subhanAllah, if we fast the six days of Shawwal regularly, meaning every single year, it's as if we fasted our entire lives. SubhanAllah. Number three is keep your tongue moist with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a famous hadith goes, Kalimatani habibatani lil rahmani, faqila tani fil mizani, afwan, kalimatani habibatani lil rahmani, khafifa tani ala lisani, faqila tani fil mizani. What are these two words? Subhanallah wa bihamdi wa subhan rabbil azim. Subhanallah wa bihamdi wa subhan rabbil azim. In another hadith, the one who says Subhana Rabbil Azim a hundred times, their sins will be forgiven as if it was as much as a foam of the ocean. Subhana Rabbil Azim, Subhanallah Rabbil Azim, Subhana Rabbil Azim, Subhana Rabbil Azim. Two seconds. It took less than two seconds. Wallahi, we can do it. Wallahi, we can do it. Push yourself. Something, the one percent. Number four is stay attached to the masjid. Even if it's one salah. Maybe five salahs, oh, maybe if it's one salah a week outside of Jum'ah. Or sorry, if it's one, perhaps it's one salah for a week, a week. Maybe one salah a day. Whatever the case may be, stay attached. Have your heart attached to the masjid. That if you're not attached to the masjid, if you haven't gone to the masjid in, in, in a few days, then you feel that, that there's this itching, there's a burning sensation that you need to go back. And if you can't go by yourself, call a friend. Alhamdulillah, Dearborn, Michigan, our community here, Wallahi, is one of the strongest Muslim communities in the nation. I'm sure that if you go to your contact book, you go to your, 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 your contacts, I'm sure that every single one of us, inshallah, can find someone that you can say, Fulan, how about you and I go to the masjid together at least once a week outside of Jum'ah? Maybe a Saturday when you're off of school and work, maybe a Sunday. And if you can, maybe, uh, subhanAllah, with the summer coming, uh, so the summer months approaching, Asr is at 5, 6 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock. That's a time where many of us are coming home from school, coming home from work. Perhaps it's Salat al-Asr. Maybe, for whatever the case may be, you choose, it's subjective. SubhanAllah. And number five is, sign up for that halaqah. That course that you've been saying you want to do, that Arabic course, that Tajweed class that you said you wanted to do, sign up for it. Sign up for it. F just take the initiative. You take one step forward, Allah will come to you running. Continue where you left off at Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength and the courage to continue where we left off. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to strive for His sake every single day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to worship Him day in and day out. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a, gl uh, a glad tiding and a good ending. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barakana fi man aatayt. Ya muqallib al-qulub al-absar, thabit qulubana ala deenak. Ya muqallib al-qulub al-absar, thabit qulubana ala deenak. Allahumma atana fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirat hasana, wa qana a'thaab al-nar, wa aqeem salah.